Good afternoon and welcome to a special floral edition of Garden Path. Today we have our special guest Carla Mori, who is a good friend, also member of the Milton Garden Club, uh, associate at the MFA in floral design, and a wonderful floral arranger as well. And so today we are going to show you how to do three different types of arrangements. One will be sort of like bringing your garden into your home in more, kind of a free form. Another will be a pave hostess gift that you can bring when you go to a party and Carla will demonstrate how to do a, a vertical design. So uh, you're, hopefully you'll pick up some tips and pointers and be able to do this at home with flowers that you may buy or, or greens that you forage and find in your yard or your neighbor's yard. So let's get started with a beautiful floral arrangement. So um, thank you, Christy. So thank you for coming. And My pleasure. We Look will forward to it. see you in a minute. She'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to do a floral, bring your garden into the home type of arrangement. So what I have here is a lovely little pedestal container. I do have oasis in it, and the oasis is taped so that if it falls or you trip, it won't come undone. The oasis has been soaked in water and floral foam to give that plant a little bit of extra um, life going forward. Uh, in front of me are various greens that will add texture and color and just give it a whole different feel. So this is a tropical shrub called Weeping Podocarpus. And this will, I will put this in along the sides just to, to create a certain line because I want this to be drapey and flowy. So I'll, I'll make clips like this and take off the bottom leaves and just sort of stick it into the oasis so it's sort of going like that. Uh, and I will continue to do that all the way around until it's pretty much covered and I can get some height there to bring it up and again cover that oasis. You don't want the foliage in the oasis because it would just contaminate it and it would be it will dry out eventually and not work as well. So I'm just going to continue that going all the way around until it's covered. And these make a lovely centerpiece if you have a long dining room table or even like a, an entry table that is a little bit longer. It's just sort of a statement piece and you know, they don't have to be perfect because nature isn't perfect. It's just beautiful when everything's in bloom. I've got a lot of other things here. This is called privet and it's, you may see the hedges around, but it's a different type of privet, but it gets these nice blue berries and they add a nice texture and color. This is magnolia foliage. It's also, it's a very festive holiday type of green that you know I might intermingle in there. Uh, this is a protea which is a tropical flower and that will be my focal flower. So I am going to start with that because it's going to take up a lot of space. So they come like this. I'm going to give it a, a good cut and I am going to find a spot right in the middle. I think that's a little too long for this. I'm going to give it even more cut and stick it right there. So it's, that's my focal flower. So it's already taking shape and looking like an arrangement. Now I want to add, I think I will add some of this magnolia foliage because it's nice and bright and reminds me of the holiday season, but I don't want this whole branch. So I'm going to cut it down and just take like a few from the top. Um, and I will make just these three leaves work. I'm sticking these on the end and sticking those in there like that and I still have these two and I will stick these coming out the side there as well. Um, this is a type of orchid. It's called Mokara orchid. Orchids come in a special tube and they're in these tubes because they don't really play well together with other flowers so they they can contaminate the water but they add a nice line so I am going to stick this going out this way and I'll take a second one and do the same thing on the other end. 
and I didn't happen to match the flower to my sweater, but it just kind of worked out that way. So that's there. And now I have all these other little tiny pieces that I can just have as accents peering out these little ones, which will be a splash of color here and there. So I also brought red roses. These are called Freedom. And what I do when I get a rose is condition them. So when you, when you buy a bouquet of flowers from the flower, sh from the flower shop, from the supermarket, it usually comes with a packet of um, powder. That's called flower food. So with roses in particular, you cut off all the leaves except for the top one, give it a fresh cut, put it in a bucket of water that has that flower food, and that allows the roses to drink because the, the water will come up from the bottom all the way up to the top and they should last a long time. I'm going to cut these a little bit longer and just kind of have them stick out going like this. Maybe one on the second side as well. And who doesn't love red roses? Maybe you don't, but I love them. So it's looking more and more like a holiday arrangement. Do more on this side so that the people on the other side of the table have something to look at as well. And when you do a lot of greenery, you don't need to have a lot of flowers in there. They, you know, the, it's, it's free forming and you can just keep going. I've also purchased tulips and an interesting way to make your tulips last a long time as they come like this. You take off the, the leaves, you give it a little pin prick underneath here and that prevents them from growing to the sun. And when you stick them in the water with the flower food, give it a shot of vodka. They like to drink. They're, I think they're involved with a, with a 12 step process, but we won't talk about that right now. So you can add some tulips. more. How's that looking? Maybe a couple more on the other side. So if you go to the supermarket and you buy a package of flowers and you don't know what to do with it, one thing you can do is you never stick, just take it out of the wrapper and stick it in a vase or a container like that. You want to as I'm doing, strip the leaves, the foliage off of the bottom and stick it in a, when you put it in a container, put it in a container that has flower food in it and um, they will last a long, little bit longer than if you were to just stick it to get, stick it all in at the same time. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the podocarpus on the back of this and cover it up. But I think, you know, it's shaping up. So I'm now going to add a little bit of this, um, these blueberries, aren't right? they? Just will add a different color, a different texture, and they flop over. So there's, it's not free form, but if I, you know, stick it in, like coming that way. And sometimes there's really no wrong answer because at the end of the day, they're flowers, they're beautiful, and who wouldn't love looking at something across the table that's just a little bit different. Other things that you can find in your yard, pine cones. Um, so you can, for points of interest, maybe on this side, I'll group a couple of pine cones. And I'll, for the third, I'll do, these are lotus pods. If you ever go where they have the tall water lilies. Um, and so many things can be done with these. These can be spray painted. They can be uh, glittered, they, but they add just a nice little thing. So I'll add that one down there and move that over. And just a little more foliage on the top. Um, and I think we can put this one 
in front of the bottle of wine. Um, but don't be afraid to cut things, to strip the foliage off. Um, it will, the plants will like it, your arrangements will like it, and it'll still be nice to look at. So, and what I also brought, this is Pyrrhus, Andromeda, but at this time of year, the former flowers turn into these little pods, but they are a nice little added thing. So you could stick this in there, maybe down here. Stick it down there to cover up the uh, edge, and just a little bit. And the greenery also adds a different texture up there. And I think I'll put a couple more roses at the top. And I want these to be a little shorter at top, so I will cut them down a little bit. And there's really no wrong way to do something like this. Um, you can add another, I'll add another tulip. Cover up this hole. And voila. Your guests will have something nice to look at. You'll have been creative because some of the things you've, you've cut will be from your yard. Some of the things you can get from this, the market, um, other sources wherever you buy your flowers. So I hope you learned a little bit and you'll have fun creating something. So now we'll move on to a, a small, easy to do hostess gift with leftover containers that you may have collected over the years. Well, now I'm going to show you how to make a hostess gift, teacher gift, whatever gift you want to use it for, for under $10. There's a good chance that you have a small container such as this in your home that you don't quite know what to do with. It could be a small jar, it could be a small vase, whatever it is, this same theory and method could be applied to any of those containers that you have at home. Again, I've got the Oasis inside. I have it leveled cut sort of flush with the container that I have here and I'm just going to use roses and a little bit of ivy. So the finished product will look like this and this I use with a square container but we'll go. So I, this, I've got these pretty little pale peach rose that I got this morning. I'm going to cut, cut to about two and a half inches, maybe shorter and just stick them straight down so that it's flush with the level of the container. So maybe I'll go a little shorter and give it some space. And if you're pressing down, press down from the base of the rose. And many, many of the markets will sell a small bouquet like six roses for five dollars or if you go to Costco or BJ's you can get many more of that for an inexpensive price and they make a nice little present to give if you're going to dinner or or you're going um, if you want to give your the, a teacher a gift and I will stick a white one in the middle So it sort of looks like a little bit of um, orange sherbet there. Um, and I'll stick one more on the side here. So there, that's all you have to do with that. So this is some ivy that I've cut from my yard. I've put a little pick in it. I'm going to cut the, the hard end. And I am just going to find a spot to stick in here at the base and wrap it around. So this makes it a little more seasonal and festive.
Then you could also take a bow and do the same thing with this. So I have one more pick. These picks are sold um, in bundles and you could probably get this at Michael's too. They have a little wire at the top and it's a little stick, but the wire you can just wrap around the base of the ivy and it helps you to place it in and secure it. So there, that's all you have to do for that. So thank you for tuning in for this portion and now we will move the next arrangement over to Carla Mori who will show you how to do a fabulous uh, vertical arrangement. So Carla, welcome back. Thank you, Christine, for inviting me here today uh, to show another design for the holidays is what we're focusing on. But I'd like to start talking about color for a minute. Um, many times this time of year, we see a lot of red and green. I'm wearing red today, a lot of green in front of me. But Christine and I both, without even speaking to each other today, decided that we would use tones of red instead of just the stark red and green. So as you saw in her design, she had some of the pinky tones of red. Um, and I'm doing the same thing with my wax flower. I have shades of pinks, same in the leucodendron, it's tips of red. And if the amaryllis would open, which takes some time, I'm afraid, um, it's a darker, deeper, more burgundian red. So it doesn't necessarily have to be any more about the traditional red and green. You can mix it up. So that's the first thing I'd like to tell you. Secondly, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we would call the mechanics of this design. This design is called a parallel design. Christine called it a vertical design, which makes a lot of sense because the lines in this design are parallel to one another and they're up and down, so they're vertical. But in flower show parlance, we call this, um, I'm sorry, we call this uh, a parallel. Even though horizontal lines are parallel, that design is called a horizontal design. So for today's purposes, we'll call it a vertical design. It's the same thing as a parallel. The, uh, what you have to have are at least three lines, three vertical lines spaced. They don't have to be the same height. They can be, but for our purposes today, I wanted to make it a little bit more natural, botanical in nature. Um, but you want to have three distinct sections. And as you'll notice, I don't have them all beginning at the same height because I think it adds more interest to the design. I started off on, on uh, my right side here. Uh, just to show you um, the materials that I'm using and then we'll go to build the rest of the design. Because there's a lot of real estate here, I just wanted to get it started um, in the essence of time. So what I have in the design is what this called, is called leucodendron. Leucodendron, which comes in a couple of different ways. You can see it in this nice slim shape. It also has bigger heads. We have some dogwood just cut out of the yard dogwood branch, red twig, boxwood, which was cut when the Milton Garden Club was going around foraging around town for our designs for our green sale last week. I have what's called wax flower, this beautiful flower here, which takes up a lot of space in a design, which is good. I have some mums, little green mums, and some white frilly ones. Mums are a lot different than the way they used to be, which was your typical head like this, daisy-ish. Um, and now they come in frilly shapes and many different colors. And I think that's all for now. So let's get started. I chose this container. What we're gonna do, this container is going to be more for uh, a fireplace mantle, a buffet table. It can be put on a foyer table, which means you'd wanna finish the back. For today's purposes, we're just gonna work from the front, but I'll make sure that the back is at least finished with plant material for your purposes. Um, as you can see right now, it's pretty sparse, but we'll get to that. The main focal flower here is the amaryllis. Very traditional this time of year. But they're very, they can be very finicky, and as I said before, it takes a while for them to open up. They have a very thick stem, and they can actually, the stem can actually be used as a vase. It could actually hold water. If these were to hang upside down, you could actually put another flower in there. As you can see, I have in here some cotton, and I have some waterproof tape around the bottom. When you first bring these home, you want to give it a cut, because what happens is a lot of times, it'll split. If you've ever seen um, a scallion, if you cut it, the ends split, they get frilly. Obviously that is not going to work well in design. So what you want to do is cut it. I've used uh, waterproof tape 
to surround it. And then what I've done is taken a ball of cotton. You can use these cotton pads here. Soak them in water. I filled the stem with water and I've put the cotton back in to hold the water inside so they can drink. You can put the amaryllis into the arrangement the same way with the tape and the cotton ball if you choose. You don't have to, but that cotton ball will continue to soak up the water, but you can also take it out. Next, I'm gonna take some of the wax flour. Wax flour is great because it's a long lasting flour. And they come in many colors, but this one is I particularly like very much. And I think what I'm gonna do with this is put it in the back. Give it a little bit more depth back there. Then I'm going to take one of my leucodendron to give some more height to the back. Strip some leaves and put it in the back here. Establishing a line. Pushing it forward a little bit. If you pull out, if you pull something out of an oasis, it's always a good idea to try to put it in a different spot. There, I want that more straight up that way. And I'm gonna take, I think, a little more wax flour. What's great about it is you have a lot of different little stems, so you can take the stems a little smaller, bunch them together, so you get a bigger show of the buds, but you don't necessarily want the height. And I'm going to put it in front this time of my amaryllis. Then what I'm going to do, I'll put in the last two amaryllis. This one has a very large stem. I'm going to cut. Put this one a little more over to the side where I have some a nice flat surface. And you have to be careful because these stems will crack. And if they do and you see it happen, again you can use floral tape. I'm not going to push this one down any farther. It's tending to want to crack. And one more, which I'm going to put lower. and a little more to the side. There we go. I also have, Christine had the seed pods, lotus seed pods in her arrangement. These happen to be covered with moss, which I thought was really nice because it really brings in that botanical. So I'm gonna take another one of these. Excuse me, sometimes things fly. And I'm gonna put it in back here. What that does is it, A, takes up real estate, but gives it more of a little interest. And now it's time to start filling in. I'm going to take a, I'm gonna bring in the white that is in the wax flower. And I'm gonna bunch them down at the bottom. You can do anything you want. There is no set rule here. Do what you like. Use flowers you like. We've heard there are rules that you can't mix tropicals with non-tropicals. I don't really believe that. And I think Christine might have just proved that with her beautiful design. I think you should just go with what makes you happy. And we're almost there. I don't want to take away my lines too much here. They're still pretty distinct, but I don't want to muddy it up too much by putting too much in front. Christine, I think we're almost there. I'd like to thank Christine for inviting me here today. Love the holidays, although we shouldn't just be the holidays that we play with flowers, because certainly you can play with flowers all, all year round. The only thing I would do now to finish this is just go along and cover the oasis. 
I will do that quickly and we're finished. I hope that you have some time to dress up your holiday table. Have fun with flowers. Well, Christine, I think we're there. We could still always add a little more, but I think I think we're good. Yeah. There you have it. Nice parallel slash vertical design for you. Um, happy holidays to everybody, and thank you for having me. I'd like to thank Carla Mori for taking the time to come in and teach you how to do this exquisite arrangement with that will last for a while because as you see the amaryllis are still a little closed but they will open up and then it'll be a new arrangement every day as they continue to bloom and with these other three as well so hope, hopefully you've learned something and you can try some of these at home I'd love to see your experiments if you do uh, do try them, so send, send them on in. I'd love to see your photos. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll see you on the next episode of Garden Path. Thank you, Christine.